Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well today. I am going to create a cascading folded card and I'm starting off with a sheet of US letter size black cardstock. I've cut it down from 11 inches to 10 and a half and along that 10 and a half inch edge I'm just going to score at three and a half. I'm going to rotate a hundred um, and 80 degrees, but I'm also going to flip it over to the back side and score at three and a half from the opposite end, but also on the back side. So that you'll have two lines, one at the three and a half inch mark and one at seven inches, but one of those will be folded as a mountain fold and the other will be folded as a valley fold. And because I always uh, fold my score lines as mountain folds to get a valley fold, I just score from the opposite uh, side of the paper. Now I am marking five and a half inches along the eight and a half inch edge. And then I rotate 180 degrees and make that same pencil mark. So you basically will have um, two pencil marks that you can then line up along your uh, cutting track, whether you're using uh, a uh, paper trimmer like I am or a guillotine. You just want to line this up. You'll end up with basically kind of a diagonal line uh, where you can see that red line there, that's going to be the cutting line. And uh, once you cut this, you'll have two card bases. So today I'll make two cards, in fact. And the way that they are folded, you'll end up with sort of a mirror. Um, both of them will be kind of mirrored uh, images or uh, shape from one another. So if you follow that zigzag fold where you fold your score line, so where it's indented, you, you fold that as a mountain fold. And, um, and what you'll end up with is two cards that will basically fold, they will fit in a US letter size um, envelope, but they are not quite as wide because this ends up being three and a half wide by five and a half tall. So that's, that's basically the size of what I like to create my mini slimline cards to. So today I am using the paper pads and the matching ephemera from the March uh, subscription box by the Not Too Shabby Shop. So the box of the month always includes two different paper pads and um, ephemera to match the theme and as well as uh, stamp sets and sometimes you get other things too like stencils, um, embellishments, and whatnot. And what I'm doing to get my mats and layers is I'm just holding up this um, piece of pattern paper that I've cut to a width of three and one quarter. And I just sort of eyeballed <laughs> and made some um, uh, marks because the pattern paper, it does have a little bit of a, like a glossy shine to it. So um, you might not be able to get a pencil mark to show up. Um, and that's why I'm using a Sharpie. I'm just being careful that I'm marking slightly, uh, you know, outside of where I want. So that top corner there on the right, I'm lining that up so it has the margin that I want. And then I just make a little tick mark on the opposite end there where I want uh, to cut it. And same at the bottom just eyeballing so that I have the same about an eighth of an inch margin all the way around. And then when I go to cut this, I'm just going to use those tick marks to make my cuts. And I have found that that's kind of the easiest way to, to get your mats and layers. And I've already done that with the little ladybug uh, papers that I selected for my second card. And now it's just a matter of decorating our cascading fold card. So 
these cards are kind of fun because there's a lot of different ways that you can decorate them and different opportunities for kind of hiding and revealing more of a scene. And I'll show you, I'll show you a couple of different things that you can do with uh, these two. So for uh, this first one, which is the ladybug one, you can see I started with uh, the wrong card base there. What I like to do is just uh, sort everything out and that way I can see what all I have to work with. Now it's a good time to mention that this video is part of a hop and to find all of the videos in the hop, you wanna click on the hashtag N2S Spring Fling. There'll be a link to it in my video title and description box, and that should bring up all of the other designers who have created something with the Not Too Shabby Shop box of the month. And you'll get to see tons of different inspiration for um, projects that you can create using the box contents. And don't forget when you're um, visiting each person's video to leave a like, leave a comment. We would all, of course, would love if you also subscribe to our channels. And when you're done, you can click on the description box on anybody's video. If you have a hard time finding it, uh, feel free to come back to my video. And if you expand the description box, there'll be a link to Rafflecopter. And that link will present you with a form. All you have to do is just fill out that form and that will be your official entry into the giveaway for a chance to win a gift certificate to the Not Too Shabby Shop. So don't forget that step. Okay, so now on to my second card. So with that first card, um, I, I sort of had like a little bit of a hidden scene um, where when you open that first flap, you can reveal um, more of a, um, well, actually a different scene. It doesn't extend the scene. Whereas with this card, the idea is by extending the full card base out, you almost get this triptych sort of scene. And it's not, it's not precisely a, a fluid scene because it's three different pattern papers, but because they are, um, all in that same, they sort of share that same blue background. Uh, not exactly the same. The, actually, the first two panels have the same blue pattern, but they're all the same blue color, which is great because um, being part of the same paper pad, of course, everything coordinates so well together. And the first two pattern papers do have um, scene elements with the frog and lily pads and water lilies. And the last scene on that card does have um, an ephemera that I added. So here's a final close-up look at the two cards that I created. This one using uh, the ladybug themed paper pad and the coordinating ephemera that matches. And here's that hidden scene. And then when you open this up a third time, I did add a white panel so that you have somewhere to stamp um, an additional sentiment if you want and then hand write a message and sign your card. These also display really nicely too. They stand really, really well. Here's the second one. And for both of these, I just use my Dymo label to, um, to create my sentiment strip there. But you can see how fun and how well the um, ephemera matches. And here, when you pull this out, you kind of see this extended um, scene. And, and so with this one, I added a white panel to the very back. And that would be where you would sign your card and write your message if you wanted. So there's a look at my two cards. I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Don't forget to hop along and to a spring fling and check out my teammates' amazing inspiration using this month's Not Too Shabby Shop Box of the Month. Thanks again. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.